Hey there, I'm Nick Nocturne, and tonight on this episode of Nightmind, we'll be learning the necessary steps for how to make a Nightmind episode. In no time at all, you too will know how to show scary and weird art projects on the internet and share them with others. Do you have a topic that you think is really cool? Okay, great! Once you have that, you can get started. Step 1. Welcome your audience in with a classic intro phrase, or something that feels right for the topic. Like, Top of the morning to ya! In this scenario, you'll want to say, Welcome back to the Nightmind office, friends. Then, you'll want to give some quick atmosphere establishing and mood setting talk to help settle everybody in. Step 2. Introduce the video sponsor, like so. Tonight, we're joined by our friends at Surfshark again, who know a thing or two about taking steps to achieve fantastic results. Next, step to the side and list the critical points behind the usefulness of the sponsor service, accompanied by fun animated visuals. Surfshark defies data and info thieves with industry-leading uncrackable encryption. You can disguise your IP address and account on DNS link protection so nobody knows where you're connecting from, uh, and there is a strict no-logs policy on a RAM-only server network in over 100 countries. Surfshark is the only VPN to reach that amount of coverage, and they're very proud to say that. It works on smartphones, game consoles, and much more which is very helpful if you're living in a special resort under constant monitoring. In fact, you can unlock other countries' libraries on streaming services, allowing you to see what the world outside the compound is watching. Just switch the country server, and whammo, you've got a whole new array of options. If you find yourself in territories where your streaming service of choice is not available, this is very helpful. And when exploring the internet, you can use CleanWeb to automatically block more than 1 million known malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats. Surfshark has a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, and for a limited time, you can get 83% off of a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free at surfshark.deals/nightmind. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.21 per month. Go to surfshark.deals/nightmind and use code NIGHTMIND, or click the link in the video description to protect your online privacy today. Again, just go to surfshark.deals slash NIGHTMIND and use code NIGHTMIND, or click the link in the video description. When you're done discussing the sponsor, thank them for their sponsorship. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring tonight's video. And now, you may return to the center of the screen. Now proceed to step three. Oh, uh, step two, 2.5, 2.5. If you think your audience won't understand why you're a talking rabbit, inform them that during this period on Nightmind, known as cabin fever dreams, you change from a four-eyed black cat into a three-eyed hare. A March hare, you see, because it's spring, and it began in March, and March hares are mad, like loony, be fun with pent up energy, l like the content. In May, things will be back to the usual spooky business with the wallpaper and rain and everything, and I will be a cat again. Step 3. Okay, step 3. Introduce the topic. Tonight, you're covering how to video results, also known as New World Strategies, which will help everyone function for the new world, a perfect world. To provide an immediate example, introduce the first episode of How To Video Results on YouTube, How To Apply Chapstick, then show the viewers some other highlights you enjoy. Hey there, I'm Glenn Waltz, and today on this episode of How To, we'll be learning the necessary steps for how to use and apply chapstick. First, what you'll need is a tube of your favourite brand of chapstick and your lips. Step 1. Take the chapstick and twist off the lid. 
If it's a new tube of chapstick, you might face some resistance when twisting open the tube. This is a tube I've opened earlier. Step two, prepare your lips for the relief of the chaptedness. <laughs> this involves drying your lips as the chapstick won't work if your lips are moist. Step three, smear the chapstick twice on your bottom lip. Step four, smear the chapstick twice on your top lip. Finally, step five, even out the chapstick by moving your lips against each other. Join us next week when I take it up a notch and instruct you on how to put on lipstick. Till next time, keep on chapping. Hey there, and welcome to this episode of How To. I'm your host, Glenn Waltz, and today we're going to demonstrate how to get by in life without appearing to care in the slightest, because you don't. <laughs> Uh, about what's going First off, you need a pair of sweatpants, slip-on shoes, your computer, and if you don't have an iPod, any MP3 player or music playing device will work. Step one. The first step starts right when you wake up, after you wake. The, you must remember to shower beforehand so you can sleep in and wake up five minutes before work. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Glenn Waltz, and welcome to another episode of our discussion show, Finger on the Button. Today, Nick and I will be discussing bad date movies. Hi, Nick. Um, what kind of, uh, what movies would be bad to uh, go on a date? Do, do you go on many dates? No. I don't go on too many dates. <laughs> um, I think you're all right. Yeah. I went on one day. Do you want to know what we saw? Uh, what's that? The re-release of Titanic, actually. Ooh, uh, I'd have thought that'd be a really romantic movie. It is not. The ship squishes. Everyone dies. It made us sad. Uh-oh. Have you seen the film Borat? I have seen My that. wife! <laughs> My wife. My wife. Okay. Next, inform your viewers that they can and should watch the full playlist of how to video results on YouTube. It would do good for you to always remember that without the creators whose art you're reviewing, you would have no YouTube channel at all, and you should be grateful responsible, and pay them the respect they deserve with your own speech at the onset and put the link to their work in the video description. Always. As for viewers, it's equally important to encourage new and developing creators by giving them due viewership and recognition, and maybe even subscribing or otherwise supporting them online to show the love. It also allows viewers to enjoy a product like this for all its weird atmosphere, humor, awkward moments, and silent scares, as what starts out funny turns into a clearly troubling situation that compels them to know more. Inform your viewers that the playlist for the series is in your video description. Then give them five seconds of silence to return, even if it's unnecessary because you know they can just hit pause and also rewind. Did you do that? Are the viewers back? Good. Step 4. Analyzing the videos. When you're reviewing a video-based unfiction project, not all of the uploads may be necessary to cover individually. It's often best to simply start where things get interesting, especially after many viewers have just returned from seeing it all themselves. Turn on your narration music, step out of view, and begin analyzing.
The first point you'll want to make, of course, is that these how-to videos are demonstrating skills that are very basic and, technically, not even really skills that require how-to videos. The characters within them are stilted, awkward, uncomfortable, and in what seems like a classroom trapped in the early 2000s, down to the way they dress and the topics that come up. The camera also reflects the time period, making for a thoroughly convincing approach. It feels familiar, nostalgic, and alien all at once, making us question what kind of scenario we're really looking at here, and whose idea it was to make these instructional videos. All the way along, there are video descriptions by the uploader, but the first one worth mentioning directly occurs for how to perform the YMCA. Show your viewers the video description using a screenshot, like so, and read it out loud. Whole lot of missing ones around here, doing best I can to keep things in order, Use forward slash list dot htm. This indicates a website is available for us, with a page titled list. If we find the website, we can try looking for that page by adding forward slash list dot htm to the end of the address. Step 5. Show the viewers the website involved in the story. Direct them to the home tab for the channel, which shows newworldstrategies.net, taken from the about tab. The clear thing to do is go to the site, and it's a good idea to indicate to your viewers how excited you are to reveal this early internet relic. New World Strategies, by New World Strategies Proprietary Limited, claims to be more than an organization. It is a belief that when this age of humanity meets its end, we will carry with us the values and ethics needed to grant us the strength of character needed to survive to the next great stage of humanity. We do not believe in an afterlife. We believe in a perfect future. We are determined not just to prepare for our salvation, but to make good of the world we have now. We do this through our intensely researched methods towards individual self-betterment. Our belief is that one's self-learning how to be a full and content person will allow them to better influence mankind in the right direction, towards nobility, honor, and integrity. We have one man to thank for bringing us together, one man who is personally overseeing that we cross the finish line into excellence. That man is Wesley Cornelius Jones, or W.C. Jones, a man of wit, charm, poise, and integrity. His calm and thoughtful leadership is what separates us from the clutter of humanity's impulse for violence and disorder, and will allow us to flourish into the next stage of our life cycle. <laughs> okay, this makes sense, doesn't it? A belief in making good of the world, through intensely researched methods towards individual self-betterment. What better way than a load of instructional videos involving steps towards that self-betterment? There is a test available now, and a table of contents. It's best to inform your viewers that not all of it has substance, like the Christmas 96 page and pictures of W.C. Jones, which has a broken image and nothing else. The rest of the links have information for conveying the story, and it's a lot of text. You'll have to summarize fine details at this point to keep viewers from slumping into a puddle or switching to a more visually stimulating video. A few classic cult trappings are laid in the site text. Empathy for those the conventional world has damaged. Insistence on rejecting the dogma of mainstream educations and religions to free people from the concept of a one true path inflicted on them. An unshackling of the chains of society's rule sets for how you live your life. An emphasis on freedom for the individual to avoid corruptive forces that wish to own them and their self trajectory. Absolutely all good things without argument but null and void when the sales pitch is followed by tracks leading to obedience towards a central figure who has unquestionable guidelines for achieving these things. Come here, quick, I'm gonna teach you something, okay? Wherever spirituality and calls to self-freedom lead to enlisting under a flag or grouping up around the advice of a singular personality, you have spiritualist teachings that have been twisted into a carrot-and-stick procedure in order to lure the easily manipulated into new dogma. Do not walk away, run. The manipulation continues on the Frequent Questions Answered page. Kind of weird that it's not frequently asked questions, right? Guess they just want it to be different. New World Strategies describes itself as a path to living a better life. That's it. It came about in 1988 when veteran, academic, and philosopher W.C. Jones, after many hard years of work spent formulating his unprecedented thesis on the world, published them in his best-selling and pioneering work, Zones of Time. This inspired a greatly impassioned response, followed by the spreading of his teachings. And now, over 10,000 members nationwide and courses available. Not immediately threatening? As we've seen people make great breakthroughs before in studies of the world that have granted new perspectives. 
I do see a string connected to the carrot regarding membership, though. So now, where's the stick? While New World Strategies is built on the teachings of W.C. Jones, he implores that the beliefs we strive towards are the continuations of thousands and thousands of years of humanity's learnt lessons. He credits the speculations and observations of those such as Socrates, René Descartes, Plato, Aristotle, Isaac Newton, and the many other instructors and philosophers of our past. Still not a trap, but too vague, right? How about this? New World Strategies is not a religion. It is a system of belief that leads to self-improvement and personal fulfillment, while also benefiting the world at large and promising the safety of our planet's future. We welcome those of any religion to enter our doors and help us build this future, provided they qualify. Why would joining such a great and beneficial movement based on personal freedom require a qualification process? Jumping down to the question of why NWS wants to help people, they say, because we understand life is not lived alone, or lived in good standing if not based in the serving of others. It is a maxim of our organization that one's worth is based on their ability to help others. To have failed to help others is the greatest failure one can endure. Now this is a clever one, alright, pay attention to this. The ability to serve and help others is a mighty element of a good life lived indeed. But your service is not the end-all be-all of your worth as a person. And look at the context. A maxim of our organization that one's worth is based on their ability to help others. What is their idea of helping others in the organization? Now the red flags fall in a parade line. New World Strategies is non-political and does not engage in any political beliefs or activity whatsoever. We believe all men should be free to hold their own views, voting rights, and should not be given direction as to what political position to take. Notice the word use there. Men, not people. Remember that for later. W.C. Jones is described as alive and healthy, and rumors to the contrary are based on misinformation. W.C. Jones was fortunate enough to have inherited a small amount of wealth at an early age, but through his wit and business acumen has turned that fortune into a considerable one. He owes his success to hard work rather than charity. <laughs> okay, they didn't mention this earlier about him, did they? So we have an already substantially powerful and well-off person now peddling books of theory, and the details about his theory are not being presented in any true depth on the page under questions concerning it. Then there's this. The deep dive interview process, or a deep dive, is the most popular and successful method towards self-satisfaction within New World Strategies tool belt. It's quite simple. You are asked questions and then you provide answers. It's the simple act of speaking feelings aloud that helps you recognize the inner dialogue of your observing mind, and therefore take control of your reactive actions. All members do it, and when it comes to deep dives, they seem to take place at the Brightview Achievement Grounds, where we house our most dedicated members, who choose to be as close to the beating heart of our mission as possible. It's also apparently the personal residence of W.C. Jones. There's also talk of whether or not they believe in aliens about to destroy the world. They don't and if they want to rule the world, they say they want to save it. On the interview page for W.C. Jones, he describes living in his retreat with his wife and daughter, and that he's homeschooling his daughter with his methods, and does not believe in private or public schooling. Think about the contradictions we've experienced here from NWS. They want freedom for people, and control of their reactive mind against the conditioning that they've experienced in life, but are also apparently making preparations for how to live best in the new world, including how-to videos? There's a lot of wait-a-minute slip-ups occurring here. Not to mention, the pictures of W.C. Jones are broken and this image is just a stock photo. The excerpt from Zones of Time, the foundational work of NWS, is a friggin' mess. It reads like the theory composition of a man who has reached great understandings but won't bother to truly explain it to you and teach it in a way that you get it from the novice level. There are some more spiritualist movement and philosophy elements here that, again, coupled with the whole picture, are just hooks on fishing line rather than nourishment for the spirit. Then there's the Oxford Internal Faculty Personality Test, which is hilariously long, and described as a state-of-the-art assessment to determine the content of your character, and therefore whether or not you're a good fit for the intense and valuable work we do. Whew. Okay. At this point, acknowledge to your viewers that it was maybe more text than you anticipated. Now, 
it's time for step 6. Let the viewers see that list. Wow, that is a lot of pages and they're filthy. Top of first page says, video list, then gives a compilation date of May 22nd, 2016. Is that when the list was compiled? And on the top right, 14 pages of topics. We only have up to 11 of them. There are dates in the right column, which appear to mark the videos that were actually made. You can spot one that we've seen, How to Not Care, on page 4 from March of 2008. This all started in March of 2006 though, and for some reason, the May 2006 entry is circled. In fact, throughout the list, items in the month of May are circled. Like all of them. On page 4, we have some strange videos. Finger on the button, Kevin07. And item 184, How to Dress for a Funeral. There's no printed date, just the name Milo. Page 5 at the bottom has a website, missingmilo.net. The last page has some interesting pieces. The date in the video list at the top left has the 5 circled for May, and a 17 drawn over the 22. For the May video, someone's written, beginning of the, and at the bottom of the page, end. Item 487, how to clean up after a fire, has no month, just the name Brazil. Final video from the pages we have, How to Make Fried Noodles, was created in December of 2012. On the list page, we have writing similar to the video descriptions on YouTube. Number 3 crashes in Brazil in 1965. Handyman visits them in bad dreams. Reynolds never spoke, but he spoke to WC. That's how he knew. And where else would he go when it all fell apart? Hope he found what he was looking for. Hope it killed him updated forward slash emails. Step 7. Tying things together. With concepts about new world strategies from the website and a timeline established by the hidden page, it would be good to show your viewers the connections within the videos recovered. The video after the list.htm breakthrough, How to Ask Out Your Crush, has a description indicating direct communication. As the uploader writes, is this the one you asked about? While being one of the most hilariously awkward and uncomfortable humor videos, it's undeniable that it's mostly uncomfortable. This character is not as likable as Glenn, and the woman who is here is clearly unhappy about the proceedings. The whole how-to video presents the idea that either this guy genuinely has no idea how interacting with women works, or there's something inherently wrong in the organization regarding their view of women. A clue we got from the website FAQ in the text regarding rights for men. Further evidence to support mistreatment in the organization is found in Finger on the Button, Women's Rights, another very uncomfortable video. Now let's swing to the upload, How to Check Your Email on Internet Explorer, which has Glenn seeming a bit more nervous than usual. Click on the button to create new email. Uh, the new window, a new window will open for you to create some electronic mail. Okay, uh, step five, type in the email of a recipient in the to row. I'll be typing my friend Nick's email, so I want to send him a funny e email. Step six, type your email. Yours doesn't have to be funny, as it could be for work. But since this is a bit of a social interaction, I'm going to share a inside joke. It's not easy to pick up fine details on the screen as Glenn gives instructions, but there's an element worth squinting to see. Hey Nick, he writes, indicating this is for Nick Austin, his peer in the video program. Step 7.5. Stop to acknowledge quickly that this guy sharing your name makes you feel uncomfortable, and you apologize for his entire presence in this series as another being named Nick. Then carry on with continuation of Step 7. Glenn writes, I think I know why so many people think W.C. Jones isn't the then pauses. He quickly deletes what he wrote and can be seen struggling before typing a lame joke. Glenn closes the laptop and wraps up the video. We see from the list on the site that how to check your email on Internet Explorer exists, but it's not documented as recorded, which coincides with a message from the uploader about not remembering being there. The following video, how to download the Internet Explorer browser, is there, as Glenn said would be coming the following week. A quick search on the site using forward slash emails.htm turns up results, and that warrants exploration. But first, acknowledge that viewers probably want to see that Milo site before moving on. Step 8. 
present the story angle of Milo Richards, a 10-year-old boy who went missing on February 6, 2008. The site is run by his uncle, John Richards, brother to Paul. The goal is to provide an in-depth summary of the events leading up to his disappearance, provide speculation as to what really happened, and construct potential theories as well as cast suspects for who it was that took him. Again, there's a lot of text to work through, so here are the facts of the case. Milo Richards would work for his father's shop in the Dandenong Ranges delivering fish and chip orders on his bike. On the day he went missing, a customer and friend of the family named Dave Hackett placed an order at 6.04pm. At 6.23, the order was passed to Milo for delivery. He strapped it onto his bike and went off. A simple 10-minute trip, nothing he hadn't done before. 20 minutes later, Milo hadn't returned and the weather was getting bad. Another 10 minutes later, Dave Hackett called to say he hadn't seen Milo. The weather turned into a storm by 7 p.m. when Paul's wife Mary arrived at the shop. The sun had set and the rain was in full downpour, making the situation much more hazardous. The couple did try to search the bike paths through the bush that Milo used to get to the neighborhoods, but to no avail. The mud from the rain had made finding anything difficult, but Milo's bike was discovered beneath a patch of mud at the base of a small cliff. The only way it could have landed there was if it had been thrown. The delivery order's remains, too, were found, with evidence that a human being, not an animal, had eaten some of it. There was a report a few days later from someone across the road from Dave Hackett who had seen an empty car parked by the cliff face at around 5pm on the 6th. A blue 93 Ford sedan, with no memory of the license plate. It was the kind of vehicle that no one who knew the area would drive, and it was a mystery in itself how it could have made it through the bush. Finally, there was an anonymous tip to police. A young man and a middle-aged man had been seen out in the bush the night of the storm. One was in a black coat and jeans, with jet black hair, and the other was a tall, thin, gray-haired man in a raincoat. They had flashlights, like they were looking for something. The tipper thought they were lost, so he shone his own light on them and called out. The man in the suit covered his face, and they both took off in the opposite direction. Now, here's where things get deeply weird. On February 6, 2008, Milo Richards went missing. On July 10, 2012, his body was found in a clearing adjacent to the creek and walking trail. His body was only partially decomposed, and despite his skin and bones showing heavy signs of water damage, he'd been significantly preserved by the freezing temperature of the creek water, but he'd been found outside of the water, still wet. Just 25 minutes earlier, the hiking group that would later find him had stopped in the clearing for a quick snack break, where no one saw anything out of the ordinary. It was on their return that they saw him, unmissable and in clear view. He'd been moved. Secondly, there was no sign of movement having occurred. That's to say no trails, footprints, or path of water leading up from the creek to his body. It was a dry day, but the only spot that was wet was the area directly underneath Milo. His clothes remained, but his hat was missing. Examination determined he was killed by blunt force trauma, weapon unidentifiable. Judging by the discovery of bones at the bottom of the creek, it was determined he'd been wedged between a crevice and a jagged rock, which prevented his body from moving. Sometime between 2.23pm and 2.48, someone had retrieved his body and placed it on the trail, without getting any excess water on it along the way or leaving footprints. Furthermore, Milo's right arm and left hand were missing. The bones weren't found with the skeletal remains in the creek, either. They were just gone, and appeared to be dismembered with surgical precision according to the marks on the body. Now, for the most unbelievable element. His missing arm and hand were replaced with a freshly bleeding adult arm and hand, cut away from their body in the same laser-like fashion. No blood was found outside the spot where Milo was placed, and there were no fingerprints on the adult fingers. Within the same hour, a man named Trey Doherty had vanished from the Royal Children's Hospital where he was waiting on the birth of twin girls. With such a curious coinciding event, requests were made to test one of Trey's family members for a DNA match to the hand and arm. This request was denied. According to a page titled The Missing Evidence, Trey's body has not been recovered, and on the page for theories by the uncle who put together the sites, it's possible that Trey and Milo were murdered by the same person. Take a look at this paragraph. From what I understand about Trey, his only surviving relatives are his siblings Mark and Lucy, who also refused to offer their DNA for a test, apparently wanting to stay out of whatever he'd gotten messed up in this time. However, I can't find any history of illicit activity to Trey's name, 
and the family is uninterested in speaking with me further to elaborate on the sentiments. It is of note that Trey changed his surname from Reynolds to the infamous Doherty at some point between 2000 and 2002, though it's unclear why. His only other blood relative is his nephew, who ran away from home at age 17 and remains missing to this day. The name Reynolds comes up on the list page for New World Strategies. What's up with this connection? Now, on to step 9, exploring the other secret website page. There's a list of emails available to read, and four downloadable documents. Now that your viewers know there's a timeline between February 2008 and July 2012 related to a murder, or two murders, that connect to New World Strategies, it's time to examine communications to see if anything lines up implicating members of the organization. After all, how to dress for a funeral in February of 2008 was marked Milo, but that could be at the hands of the uploader. It is worthy of note that the video marked as being made during that time is titled How to Deal with Grief, and strangely, the one before it on the list is How to Babysit. Together, you and your viewers can examine the evidence to see where it leads on the topic of Milo Richards in concert with New World Strategies, and potentially uncover information about what's really occurring behind the scenes of the how-to videos. Glenn Waltz, future engineer, emailed Nick Austin informing him that Rodney and others were keen for him to step on camera in September of 2006. Nick Austin agreed and produced a list of potential video ideas, all of them questionable compared to the goals of the organization. A continued thread about one topic, how to ask out a hottie, upset Nick Austin when it was suggested to the more accessible, how to ask out a crush. He wrote, Why is this happening? Can't a man have ideas in this modern world? I would like to pick the girl. He also follows up settling down about the title change, saying he'll do the video. Glenn is glad to hear it and says Rodney will email the script. Which girl would he like? Nick Austin replies, Hi Glenn, I am writing from a difficult place right now. The world is floating where I am because I get funny headaches. Sometimes if I stand up really fast it helps. You know which girl I want. Then a bunch of smiley faces and XOX. He does not seem okay. This is downright concerning. Glenn tries to clarify, asking about Frida Isom. Austin replies, the red hat. The next thread is between Glenn and PonyPal 1985, and it's very clear he's talking to a girl who's flirting with him and returning affections. And next, we have something live on the Milo front. It's an email from Nick Austin to a Nathan Langdale from 2010. It's definitely his address, but it's marked... Nick Reynolds. The discussion is about the cool piano they now appear to have. At the end of the how-to series, Nick Austin, or Reynolds, is playing the piano with ease. Almost expertly, actually. Next are a bunch of emails of Nick Reynolds being just disgusting. An absolute middle school level clown in a man's body towards his peers in the program, the women in it, even the government. Yeah, he's the type to send unsolicited, here's how to fix the country, emails to officials. Every email really drives in deeper the idea of a little worm of a boy whose fingers you'd like to see twisted off with a pair of bolt cutters. Before finding myself in need of a break from the emails, or wondering where the nearest department store is, it mercifully gets interesting again and back on the mystery. Glenn is emailed by Pedro Santos, an investigative journalist from Brazil writing a news feature on New World Strategies. Glenn replies directing Santos to the website. He replies back stating that he's tried the suggested address at the site and hasn't gotten any answers, so he'd like to ask some questions to Glenn if he can. Glenn is cagey in his responses, once again referring to the website for info. He says his title as Future Engineer refers to production of content for future endeavors, and he produces media that relates to reinforcing values. In further questioning, Glenn states that he's not supposed to share the nature of the material they're producing. It's rather odd, isn't it? The how-to videos seem relatively harmless, even if they are strange. But I can't really say that they reinforce any values, right? Eventually, Santos gains Glenn's confidence, and he says he might try to show the media being produced. But it seems that Glenn may have gone to his superior, Rodney, because his next message says he wants their conversation stricken from the record and not shared to the public, and if there's a breach of that request, there will be severe legal ramifications. In July of 2006, Glenn and PonyPal, who we come to know as April in the text, have a blow-up with each other over the August workload, as Rodney is apparently bearing down on Glenn for the videos, and there was some confused agreement between them to provide. 
It gets nasty, and after April goes quiet following Glenn being callous, there's mention that he was just trying to protect her from ending up on level 4 again. So, new world building, there seems to be some level-based punishment system. This leaves us with the four downloads. Two scripts, something redacted with C. Jones, and a phone call. The first script is how to do a great John Howard impression, a political figure. Nick Austin wrote that, and he's describing himself as Nick Austin here. The second is also by him, about how to write song lyrics, and Rodney is just annihilating him with a red pen all over it. The redacted download is... A finding into death with inquest from January of 2009 about a redacted individual at 86 Carpenter Street, Brightview, Victoria. This is where the New World Strategies compound is. Death occurred on 5th of February 2008 at Epworth, Brightview. The deceased was a 21-year-old who resided at Brightview Achievement Grounds at 86 Carpenter Street, Brightview. Redacted had been in that facility for approximately 16 years, the care of her parents also redacted. On February 5th, 2008, she presented at Epworth Brightview, a hospital I'm guessing, with massive hemorrhage from a self-inflicted injury to the interior cervical region. That's the throat. Her condition was diagnosed as terminal. Family decision was to treat palliatively. At approximately 11.17pm on May 2nd, 2008, she was found deceased in bed 5, ground west wing. Was this... W.C. Jones's daughter? The parentheses, C. Jones, Carolyn Jones, as stated in the interview from the site. What happened? Now, looking at the phone call, it's from Brightview Police, a document detailing a CD recording. It was recovered on January 14, 2013, suggesting the Brightview compound was seized. Remarks say, Call made by Wesley Jones to assistant on May 2, 2008 at 11.20pm regarding re-upholstery. Moves June 2nd appointment from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sound of equipment being unplugged in background. Unprocessed. Regarding reupholstery, this took place three minutes after his daughter was declared dead. What is going on here? Step 10. Step 10, right. For this step, uh, look around and see what pieces remain unexplored, acknowledging to the audience that while the emails and downloads were somewhat informative, they really didn't clarify the Milo case much better, and the Santos email seemed like a red herring for the Brazil connection. In the video, How to Feed a Cat, the uploader says in the description they heard a knock at their door last night. No one in sight. I think your theory is starting to make a lot of sense. In How to Tell a Knock Knock Joke, featuring Nick Austin, the description reads, Pretty sure he was using that name because of the charges. Next video comments about how he used to call me babyface, scared the shit out of me, never said a thing. Then, in the first security footage piece from July 11, 2008, at least now no one can forget. I suppose that's something. Any news from Brazil? Next security footage, May 9th, 2008, as Glenn seems to panic on the phone with who we may now assume is April. Uploader says, TD last seen July 12th, 1052. No one saw him walk out. When they make it to the crash site, where do they go next? TD. Terry Dockett, the man who went missing from the hospital waiting for his twin girls, last seen July 12, 1052. No one saw him walk out. When they make it to the crash site, where do they go next? What is it about crash sites here? Terry Dockett. Is the person investigating everything to do with these videos also the one investigating Milo's case? Is it Milo's uncle that we're dealing with here? The uploader says on small talk, wish I could still save her from that place, but I know you better than that. Save who? Final video description reads, can I stop? Okay, so we have a mystery uploader who was part of the film set, but doesn't appear to be Glenn because Glenn hosted the email video and the uploader doesn't remember filming it. They have a collaborator and wish they could have saved a woman from the Brightview compound. They are aware of Terry Dockett, which means they're probably also aware of the Milo case. There's something about waiting for news from Brazil, where number three crashed, according to the list page, whatever number three was. Mention of Reynolds must relate to Nick Reynolds, right? And he spoke to WC. That's how he knew. What did he know, though? And as for Nick Reynolds, 
is this the nephew who ran away? Nick Reynolds as a figure is very strange, and I mean more than just his disgusting treatment of his peers. You might have seen his sudden shocking piano playing in the final video, but there's a scary moment before that during the job interview upload. Watch this. What are the more challenging aspects of this position? What's your management style? Did Reynolds move that ceiling fan just by staring at it? What is going on with this guy? Who is he? And when it comes to the security footage videos, it seems we're shown backwards in the playlist. This might be a day-month-year format, but it would still hold true for the timeline of the year. Glenn is scared for April, it appears, or someone in the program. Later, Reynolds asks Glenn if he misses her. And finally, Reynolds fits the general details of one of the individuals seen in the area of Milo's disappearance. Seriously, who the hell is this guy? And for that matter, who is the handyman? What is going on with crash sites and Brazil? And what happened to Glenn? Step 11. Acknowledging the nature of unfiction investigations on fresh projects. Inform your viewers that as this project is so new and most new projects roll out updates as they're completed, it's quite possible that you've just reached the end of what's available now. There's certainly no complaints here about how much is out there already. Quite the opposite, actually. I'm trying to find more, and that's the issue at hand. I need more. <laughs> I just don't know if there's more at this moment, and if there is, I'm not entirely sure on the method of progression, having already tried a few different page names on the site to see if there's extra pages based on text hints. So that being said, we're on to... Step 12. Completing your coverage of the project. That's right. It's time to gush about why this is brilliant, because really, it is. On first viewing, on just the first episode, I was instantly reminded of the work of Wham City Comedy. This house has people in it, children of the mirror. This feels like an idea that could have been theirs in concept and execution. It has similar DNA. It's funny, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, it's disturbing, it's played in seriousness, and it's hiding an entire story underneath with branching paths. The dedication to presenting the videos in this old 2000s form is so good too. It's delicious. The location, the outfits, the camera, the topics, the tech. Bravo to everyone who got into this and did the work, because it pays off. Even without the website attached, just watching these videos lets you know there's a story of something abhorrent happening, and you've gotta know more. You look for details, you listen for clues, you put pieces together. This is the kind of thing people do come together to make theories about, and without new world strategies in the picture, there'd be a whole lot of theories. We do have NWS in the picture though, and it's a great inclusion in world building construction. It's actually a lot like the how-to videos playing now you see it now you don't with the snake in the grass that is the underlying story. This too is so excellent in its makeup and relating it to the time period and presentation in the videos. And the hidden pages? The additional website and even crazier, almost separate seeming mystery uncovered through one of those hidden pages? Now you've really built out something to explore and cranked up the drive for those theorizing people in your audience. Seriously, think about it. How did we get from awkward, uncomfortable humor in poorly made how-to videos to a murder mystery with two unrelated victims under impossible circumstances? This is so wild. Story abounds in this project in all its outlets, and it's all formatted to the time period in such a delightful way. I'm impressed, I'm engaged, and I've had fun with this. I'll admit that even the load of text on the sites makes sense, because these are meant to be old. Most of the internet really did just used to be long text and pictures. Am I going to be slightly embarrassed if a bunch of you tell me hours after uploading that you found five more pages or so that I didn't catch? Yeah. But uh, I'll be way more elated that you uncovered more story for us to go through. Subscribe to How To Video Results if you're interested in this one. They may use the channel more in the future. Step 13. Sign offs. Exit narrator mode and return to the scene.
After spending the night investigating the oddities related to the topic, it's good to thank your viewers for joining you in the dark this evening. Be sure to also thank the sponsor again, like so. Thank you, Surfshark! Then, thank the creators of the project for making this excellent work. Thank the viewers for watching. And thank your supporters on Patreon, who empower your mission for a better world. Invite anyone who wishes to support your channel to join Patreon for as little as just $2 a month, which goes a lot further than they know. Also mention how you're having a lot of fun making live Nightmind videos and playing games and theme with the channel over on Twitch. That you would love to see your viewers there. And the link is in your video description. Have you had fun tonight? I know I have, and I hope you did too. You're almost ready to make your own Nightmind video as long as you remember this closing message. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Keep learning how to do anything your heart desires, and sleep tight.